Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, with a topic about sex. It's from the point of view of an older woman. Hello, all of you out there. I hope you are having a wonderful day of sex or Sex when you get it. Sex when you do some solo play there. Now, we all have our issues from time to time when it comes to sex. Don't like to admit it, but hey, it does happen. And a lot of that comes with anxiety about performing, you know, performing the act of sex or not really, you know, having somebody else look at you while you're having sex as much as you're probably enjoying yourself. It's difficult for some people to really, you know, be able to look like they rather have the lights off so that their partner doesn't see them or... Uh, you know, they just don't get undressed all the way, or they just, you know, just do not do certain things because, you know, they're uncomfortable. Everybody is like that from time to time. Some people get over it from, you know, working, you know, and enjoying it and learning about themselves sexually, maybe through masturbation or maybe through a partner, bringing that out into light. However way you want to look at it. Uh, And not everybody gets, you know, on the same level at the same time. But hey, it's a work in progress. So, one of our, well, today's, shall I say, topic is going to be sensate focus. Now this is a um, sex therapy. It's a component of it, especially if you are, you know, having difficulties with that anxiety, which is actually called um, anticipatory anxiety. And this particular sex therapy is to help you with that Um, anticipatory anxiety or the anxiety that a partner has prior to a sexual encounter when fearing the outcome of that encounter. It generally um, targets what they call spectatoring, you know, and it's described as uh, watching's, watching one's self, you know, while being sexual. A lot of people cannot do that. Very uncomfortable for them. Now, through this kind of sex therapy, the goal is to basically uh, heighten 
your sense of awareness when you are with your partner sexually. Now they do these exercises that um, it's that comes with sensate focus. Uh, they offer an approach to like sexual arrangement, so which is really cool. It helps couples, um, basically, who are seeking exercises that are designed to correct like the non-physical erectile problems and to enhance the orgasm response so what is everybody's goal basically in sex is to they get uh, the ultimate orgasm and while you're at it it will also help to like basically enhance intimacy uh, in communication during sex. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk because it kind of sort of, they've already got that anxiety and, you know, talking doesn't seem to work while they're having sex. This helps with that. Now, with this particular sex therapy, there are the, the exercises and they are divided into three progressive stages. Now, uh, you have to, like with everything, practice makes perfect, but you have to master each step or stage. So before even going to the next one, uh, they give a good example, whereas a couple may spend uh, a several love making well several love making sessions on one stage before moving to the sec the next one, which is what you do now you're basically always going to repeat the previous stage each time that you do this so and this really the way you progress in these stages and how you progress in it overall really depends on your progress and your comfort level. Level it has nothing to do with anybody else's comfort level. It has to do with your comfort level. So just remember that. Now, there are a few helpful suggestions and I'm going to give them to you. <laughs> Obviously, during sex, you will decide on a way to communicate during this particular, you know, these exercises that you do for sensate focus. Uh, a lot of couples will use like verbal signals. Uh, some actually use a rating scale from one to ten, where one is not pleasurable. Five is neutral and ten is the most intense pleasure. Interesting enough. Um, others use hand over hand techniques. Um, and this is where the one being touched takes the partner's hand and which gives them control over the uh, degree of pressure as well as the pattern and the length of the strokes that are being motioned or used by the partner during sex. Also gives you, you know, showing your partner how, one, you're getting comfortable with their touch, but two, um, it's letting your partner know how you're feeling, or, you know, how things work so that you can be comfortable during sex with that partner and not be so, you know, so overwhelmed with anxiety that it makes it very difficult to even concentrate during sex. So, one of the next suge helpful suggestions is, is plan to do the exercises when both you and your partner are rested, believe it or not, and not press for time because this way you get more out of it and if you press for time it's not really helping either one of you because in the next 
a sexual encounter comes, you'll probably gained more anxiety. That anticipatory anxiety level will have like risen. So do it when you're both comfortable, relaxed, you know, you don't have anywhere to be. You're just enjoying each other. And this is what this is for. Um, don't do them like after eating, especially a big meal, like Thanksgiving. <laughs> or if and when you've had a major disagreement, because it's not going to work there either. You don't want to be taking out, um, any, you know, anything that has to do with your feelings out into your sexual, you know, time, because not only are you going to have anticipatory anxiety or anxiety level and everything else is going to be so out of whack, it's unreal, and you probably couldn't perform to begin with, and it would be giving you a little bit of distress towards each other. So you don't want that at all, because that is not the goal here. Um, no suggestions. Be creative. Always, always be creative, partner. Um, use your senses. All of them. I know we rely a lot on our touch, especially insects, but we have other, you know, other senses. The smells, the seeing, the hearing. Use them because that's what they're there for. And you're going to get that whole, you know, that total uh, feeling in ambiance. Especially if you put on aromatherapy, some candles, things that are going to make you be, you know, feel comfortable or put you in the mood. Uh, your partner wearing sexy lingerie. Reading, you know, you can read an erotic story to each other. Well, you know, that's that really soft light, which really always is good for enhancing sensory pleasure. So remember that as well. Very good to know and do. Um, and the last suggestion that they give is, you know, after that sex fest, as they call it, session, uh, you want to really have, you know, communicate between you and your partner about how uh, both of you feel and everything like that. Uh, positive experiences as well as the negative experiences, also positive feelings and negative feelings. Uh, and discussing this with your partner when it starts to help you get a little bit more comfortable being with your partner um, in every aspect, like intimacy, bonding, everything, but especially when it comes to sex. So there are some stages of sensate focus. And, you know, you got to be, it, remember when you're doing these exercises, you got to actually uh take turns between the two partners you know maybe one wants to be the giver and you're the receiver or at another time you know you swap you become the re uh the giver and they become the receiver you gotta swap you know there's all kinds of different levels of touch which we all know you know there's the firm the light with fingernails or feathers it could be a kitchen utensil who knows people's minds get really really creative when you let them loose so that is a positive <laughs> but be creative watch and listen to your partner those those cues where they are showing you that they are enjoying what you're doing as this is the overall effect that we you know want to reach and that's where we want to be with this and 
It's really like Sensate. It's spelled S-E-N-S-A-T-E. So right there when reading that one word, senses comes into play. And that's what this therapy is all about, this sex therapy. The focus, you know, in that you're focusing on your senses. You and your partner of each other, of yourself, everything. It's an exchange, which is very, very important and uh, very, very good to have especially when you are growing that sexual relationship even if you've been together for a very very long time and you're reaching a little bit of a difficulty in your sexual relationship uh, or even in your regular relationship and it has gone over and flowed over the top into your sexual um bed Whereas now you're looking into getting help. And this is a way of um, kind of sort of regaining it and working on it. That's why it is sex therapy. On uh, that note, before I go into the stages, and got to look up a really good sex position for today. Uh, we'll figure one of those out. I am going to take the first break in the show. So. Do you get a snack? Do you get a drink? Come back, get relaxed, and I will meet you back here for more Sex Talk with Andra. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am a, your host, Andra, with a topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back after the break. I hope you are comfortable and you have your snack and your drink close by, because we are going, we are talking about sensate focus. And this is a form of sex therapy, um, which helps with those who have that anticipatory anxiety before, you know, sex. And, and it's really all about the performance and the fear. Um, a lot of people like the lights off. Others, uh, you can't talk during it or any, you know, during sex. And, you know, feel really uncomfortable at certain touches. So this is, this is a sex therapy, uh, therapy that you can use to build those, uh, touches and builds that intimacy and that bond and puts you, you know, base, hopefully basically back on track with each other or it's something that is new with a new partner how should you get through that and work through you know that little bit of fear or could be a lot of fear and you're using your other senses uh, remember sensate senses and how to focus in on those and we're talking about like obviously during sex it, you always use your sense of touch but if you uh, give ambiance that brings out your other senses like 
the smells, the what you see, the sight, what you hear, you know, listening to your partner, knowing when to identify that they are enjoying themselves and knowing that you are doing that correctly and, you know, allowing your partner to basically uh, have and gain some control to help them through their anxiety with sex or during sex. So it's a really good sex therapy and we are going to discuss the stages of sensate focus. Now, as we are moving along, remember the helpful suggestions that I did give you before we went to break. We are now moving on to the actual exercises. And it's basically to enhance, like, everything you want sexually. <laughs> basically. So, like, with stage one, it's going to be you and your partner. You're going to take turns touching each other. Uh, and specifically, each other's body. Okay? From head to toe. But remember that the genitals and the breasts are off limits. So sorry. Your goal is not to like evoke or to sense sexual arousal. So we're trying to work on the first part and that is basically allowing your partner and you from your partner learning the you know the body, your body, and, you know, you're touching each other and understanding the different curves and crevices and, uh, you know, things, but like just the outline of the profile of your partner's face with your fingertip, but you cannot touch the genitals or the breasts. Because that's not what we're going for in the first stage. We are learning about each other's body. We are focusing on um, and, to, and you're being mindful of those sensations that you generate uh, while touching your partner and your partner's touching you. And you at this stage, you are describing them. You're describing these sensations at, at each stage. And most importantly, in a non-judgmental way to each other. All right. Um, if you're going to, you know, the first person who is touching, and you're going to switch giver, receiver, receiver, giver, um, the person who is doing the touching uses their own interest, remember, you know, what you're interested in touching on your partner, seeing what it does, a little bit of, you know, interest there, and obviously what comes along with your interest, your curiosity. So we're going to use your interest and curiosity. And this is to guide you where and how to touch your heart, basically. Um, the person receiving, which would be your partner, uh, will, uh, you know, they're going to provide feedback to you. Whether it's verbal or nonverbal, they could moan and you know they're enjoying it. Or they can say, oh, please don't touch there because... It's uncomfortable for them. So you're going to get it either way. And they're going to communicate this feedback to you. And they're also going to communicate about where to touch and not to touch. That's what it is. And they have to because it's the only way you're going to learn. Now, there is a time limit. So it's approximately 15 minutes. Reverse the roles. Now you become the receiver and they become the giver. 
um, and you do it again. Now it's your turn to provide that feedback, verbal or nonverbal. Again, important thing is do not touch genitals or breasts. They are off limit in stage one because this isn't where we're going with this. Uh, and those of you who are, are just, I mean, when you are in a, you know, in the sexual bedroom or wherever it is you're having that sex, you can do this even if you're comfortable with your partner because it just gives added intimacy, added bonding, added cessation. And you can like indirectly touch the genitals, indirectly touch the breast because of all of those nerves which are, are going to send your partner into massive sexual arousal. But for purposes of sensate focus in the first stage, you cannot do it. Off limits. So now we are on to a stage two. Now, once you start mastering stage one and you're not going to get it on the first try, even if you think you are, you are not. So you're going to constantly practice that. All right. And you're going to work on this and you're going to build on it. And when you feel that you've gotten to that point where you've um, mastered that stage, move on to stage two. And I'm going to explain that to you. Now in stage two of Sensate Focus, you're touching becomes expanded to include the breast and the genitals. So you've gone from non-use of touch, you know, non-being able, not being able to, you know, touch the breast and the genitals in stage one. And you're getting to learn each other through touch and being very mindful of the responses that you get from your partner and vice versa. Stage two, you add in these areas. All right, because the person who is doing the touching, you're instructed to begin with general body touching, which is from stage one, not to immediately move to the genitals or breast. Work up to it. Okay? The emphasis here again still is on the awareness of the physical sensations and not the expectation or anticipation of sexual arousal but adding in the genitals and the breast gives you even more because your partner's going to tell you still talking to one another what works what is off limits what's on limits and you know remember here still intercourse eh, no no penetration yet still off limits um take turns trying a handwriting technique as they call it and this is as a means of non-verbal communication and this is done by placing one hand on top of your partner's hand while being touched uh, you can indicate if you would like more or less whoever's the receiver at the time can indicate this because this is how you are progressing through this and learning from this and this is how, you know, you gain that added um, intimacy and bonds and learning and, you know, relief of that anticipatory anxiety or any anxiety that will come during sex. Uh, it they'll tell you, you tell them when it's your turn. Um, you know, it's up to them. They're kind of sort of guiding your hand 
and they will tell you if they would look, you know, like more or less pressure or a faster or slower pace, you know, to slow down, go faster, whatever, or even to change to a different spot on their body that they want you to touch. The whole goal here is providing your partner with the feedback uh, is to give him or her, either or, some guidance. So you're guiding the hand, like I said, and you're learning. And it's not to control how, you know, he or she is touching you. It's more to control it, to show them, to uh, learn them, basically, and to anyone, I, I know it's really hard. You are going to get sexually aroused, but you're going to keep your focus, which comes in now, very good control of focus, and continue to focus on your senses, and allowing your partner to give you this feedback. And again, after about 15 minutes or so, change, you know, change giver and receiver. Well, the receiver becomes the giver, the giver becomes the receiver. If the person wants you to do it a little longer, that's fine. Just remember to, you know, stop it so that you can, you know, change up because both of you are in this and learning and working through this exercise. Now, stage three of sensate focus. Now, instead of taking the turns of touching one another, this is where it changes. Uh, try some mutual touching. So you're touching each other at the same time. Okay. Uh, obviously, the goal is to practice a more natural or real life form of physical interaction. Uh, and it's also to help each of you shift attention, like each other's attention, to a portion of your partner's body and away from watching your partner's uh, own response. So remember that you're kind of sort of directing it away from them. And remember... No matter how sexually aroused you become, you still can't have that penetration of sexual intercourse. Big thing here. Lots, lots, like lots of control. And on that note, we are going to take a break here. And, you know, go replenish that drink. Replenish that snack. Come back at re relaxed. Or if you filled up in the first round, Sit right there and don't go anywhere. Just snuggle down a little bit more and we are much more comfortable. And I will meet you back here for more sex talk with Andra after the break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back. I hope you're relaxed and comfy and get your favorite drink and snack sitting right next to you within arm's length, or maybe your partner's breast. My genitals are there. Whichever you prefer to snack on. But we are talking about sensei focus and how uh, learning, you know, working on and being mindful of all your senses and focusing in on those, not just the, you know, touch, but all your other senses, especially. You know, if your partner or you, either or, is suffering from anticipatory anxiety or anxiety, you know, which is right before, you know, doing the act of sex. And this is a way of working through that. But as promised, I have a sex position for you guys. And then we will get back into our subject matter of focus, uh, sensate focus sex therapy. Alright, so the position is the good X. You heard it right. The good X. Now, the way in which well, first of all, it this is an ideal position to give your clitoris or, you know, your partner especially, you know, especially for the woman that little added attention that it deserves. Now, what you do is you're reaching down with your free hand and pleasuring yourself at the same time. So, to do it, sit on the bed and you're facing each other with legs forward. So basically you're laying and your feet are touching basically. Now, Lift your partner's right leg, because you're going to do a little scutching up there. Lift your partner's right leg over your left leg, and lift your right leg over their left leg. I know it's a little confusing. A lot of lefts and rights in there. Uh, Then you come together so that you can, uh, so your partner can enter and, you know, penetrate you. Or anybody who is game. Now, when you come together, you're doing it so, uh, you know, one of you is basically leaning upward and the other is laying down, but you both have eye to eye contact there. Now, both of you lie on your back with your legs are forming the X. And basically what you do from that point on is you do slow leisurely gyrations. And this, these gyrations would, are replacing that thrusting motion. Okay. So you're kind of sort of taking it slow and easy, you know, moving your hips in that circular motion, that figure eight, you're not thrusting, you're, you're going slow. For women, that little clitoris, that clit is getting its due and getting the attention it needs. So that is called the good X. Hence the body position in the X position. And I hope you go and try that once you do your sensei focus exercises. Even if you are comfortable with each other and you don't have any anxiety and you're going to do these, ex- you know, exercises anyway, it's always a good way to enhance your intimacy and your bonding with your partner. So you can like move other things into there. But we'll have a, another sexual position, which I have one in already in there. Next show. So let's get back to our topic. 
You know, right now we are no sex, no penetration. First stage is you're not touching the genitals, but you are touching uh, the receiver is you're being the giver to your partner and you're touching all parts of their bodies and, you know, realizing and focusing on how they are reacting and how it feels, but you're not touching genitals or breasts. Then we're going to go to our second stage. Once we get through all that, uh, you know, gotten stage one down through practice and you've mastered it. So now we are moving on to stage two where now you can uh, touch the breasts and the genitals, but still no sexual intercourse. I know. You have that sexual arousal, but I'm going to knock you back down a little there. We are still working on knowing our partners and partners' bodies. Very, very important to know because, you know, we are trying to get rid of uh, and alleviate. You know, there's always going to be some little bit of form of anticipatory anxiety but you know just that more at a relaxed way pace where you're not going to uh overdo it so to speak so remember that because that's what it is all about being with your partner sharing uh you know pleasurement with them and through this you learn, you know, you don't want to, uh, be uncomfortable in the bedroom. You want to be able to enjoy each other. And that's what the whole goal of this is to not feel so uncomfortable because then we'd have to figure that out too. And that just adds one more thing onto the list that you guys have to do. So we are now at the later stages of Sensei Focus. And in the next stages of this, you're really continuing with you know, the mutual touching, then at some point to move, like, into the female on top or partner on top, whoever wants to get on top, position without, now, this is the hardest part, without attempting penetration of anything, whether it's a penis, a dildo, anything into your partner. Sorry for females into the vagina, males, anus, but no, 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 no. Even though you are close, there's no sexual penetration. Sorry, we're still working here. Now in this position, you're all, you can rub your partner's genitals against your own and it's regardless of the presence of arousal all you're doing is rubbing you can't do anything else it's tough i know because you just want to kind of sort of you know enjoy yourself i understand you know as you progress to putting the tip of the dildo or the penis into the vagina or the anus, whichever you prefer. All this time you're doing this, you're going to be focusing on the physical sensations 
and stopping or moving back to non-genital touching. If either partner, doesn't matter who, becomes orgasm-oriented or anxious. So, remember, no, 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 penetration. We are close, but still no penetration. We're touching, that's fine. We're rubbing, that's fine. No penetration. No full penetration. May you see that arousal coming? Back it off. Back off and go back. Now, you must note that in stages 2, 3, and beyond, into the later stages, that the orgasm or and or the ejaculation is not the primary goal. Obviously, if you want to proceed to this stage of arousal, it is acceptable, but the whole idea is to try and work on this. It, it takes a lot, a lot of practice. That's why it's called sex therapy and not let's play around. But obviously, if you aren't, you know, experiencing sexual anxiety and you want to try these exercises, it is something new that you can try in the bedroom with your partner. Um, you don't want, you know, you can try it and it's a, it's almost like starting a new position or trying a new position sexually because you have to really sit back and have like so control over your body and how it's going to you know feel how your partner's going to react as the giver how you're going to react as the receiver and then you know switching those roles so i mean when you get to that point and you see that that's pretty much a good time to swap roles so look at it that way now obviously during usually sex therapy is talk te therapy just getting out a lot of the communication it's not hands-on um in the you know a sex therapy session everybody remains fully closed and there's no touching so you know moving it along to this point where sensate focus does come into play is really really good because it helps to uh develop you know the technique of it was really initially developed as a sex therapy technique and it, it was in the 1960s so I remember that and it's really a lot and it's really good because they explain them as um, behavioral exercises that couples do together and obviously the end result is to enhance their intimacy and connection that bond needs to basically grow which is really really good there believe it or not with the foundation of sensei focus uh, there are elements that serve as that foundation and and works with this and it's basically you know establishing mutual responsibility between you and your partner um, and this is for addressing sexual needs and concerns providing information and education about sexual function and sexual activity it also is partners being willing to change attitude their attitudes the individual prejudices about sex or even you know how it's done and moving it along 
getting rid of sexual performance anxiety, which is one of the main goals, remember? So, it's very, very important. You want to be comfortable and you want your partner to be comfortable while having sex. So, on that note, and we will get back to these haha, <laughs> after the break. So we are taking the final break in the show today. So, your choice, whatever you want to do. But hopefully right now you are very comfortable. So stay right where you're at. Hands in your pants, hands in your partner's pants. Doesn't make a difference. We are in the touching mode. No sexual intercourse. What insensate focus. So, on that note... In downfall to getting aroused, <laughs> I will meet you back here after the break from the final segment in the show with more sex talk with Andra. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Andra, where the topic about sex is from the point of view of an older woman. Welcome back to the final segment in today's show, where the topic has been sensate focus. And remember the position, the good X. Now, the whole idea of sensate focus is to focus on all your senses during sex. It is a form of sexual therapy, um, and it helps you and your partner as a couple, as a pair, to improve your communications. That is centered around sex and sexual techniques in the bedroom. You know, help to get over that anticipatory anxiety, that anxiety that comes with sex. It takes some people a little longer to work through than others. You know, there's people out there, a lot of people out there who have been hurt in before and, you know, starting anew is kind of difficult or something may have just been an issue that happened between you and your long-term partner and now you are looking to work that out so that you can get back to being sexually comfortable with each other remember the lights are not always going to be off another thing is it reduces problematic behaviors and sex roles in the relationship you have whether you're married whether you're in a long-term relationship or you are just meeting someone or just it's a new relationship in sex you know you've gotten to that point where like in the beginning when you're first meeting or being with a new partner you're kind of a little nervous because you're so used to maybe somebody else that you will wait. You don't know what your new partner is going to be. So you get a lot of that anxiety that comes along with it. Uh, now, one good thing, and with all therapies 
or uh, counseling sessions, whether it be sex or not, comes homework. <laughs> now, homework is really good. I know you hated it when you're in school, but this kind of homework's, you know, good homework. And you're given homework, you know, you're given homework as a couple, as, you know, that partnership. And this is uh, to help you change your sexual relationship for the better. So homework is always, always good. Now, they actually look at Sensate Focus and they focus in on two of the most important elements in the success of it are one, acceptance of mutual responsibility and two, a willingness to do homework as prescribed by the sex therapist. You got to complete your homework. It, it just comes down to that. <laughs> Now, there is, you know, a crucial, crucial point in this is mutual responsibility, okay, because it frames sexual difficulties, you know, as a problem of both partners, the two of you together as that couple, as that partnership, instead of one versus the other and that's not what it's all about so remember that when you are working on a problem with you and your partner in a relationship it is dual always always dual you're in that partnership for a reason two minds must mesh in most you're going to have your individuality but overall, when it comes to, like, sex, you kind of sort of go to be on the same wavelength. Because it will cause lots of problems outside of the bedroom. Now, the homework that is given is structure, uh, structured assignments. They are, like, it's a component that separates sensei focus from other behavioral techniques that you might have issues with. Uh, now, one of the hallmarks of Sensei Focus is that it temporarily takes stressful behaviors off of the both of you as a partnership, as a couple, right off the sexual menu. You know, um, with the sources of the stress removed out of that, which is really, really one of the big, big things is the stress. It might, you know, sometimes most, I would say 95% of the time, we don't exactly separate sex stress with work stress or anything else. Kind of sort of mush it all together. Uh, not always a good thing. Because there is a difference. There's stress in your everyday life and then there's stress in your sexual life. And when you can't differentiate between the two, it starts to pour over and creates more problems. Now, what a sex therapist will prescribe there's like specific recipes of steps to follow to improve your sexual lives. Very, very, very good to have. Now, a, I went over some stages in the last se segment of Sensate Focus. Uh, there are two principal goals. Of sensate focus, like I said, reducing performance anxiety and improving communication. Always, always a good thing. Helps, helps, helps. A good way in which, like, if you do go to a sex therapist or you're working on this, they will generally give you 
uh, homework. This is one of the samples of that homework. Whereas, uh, it's for, it's like as a couple where one partner is experience, experiencing erectile dysfunction. And that's what the scenario is. What they have them do, it goes kind of sort of like this. This is how this particular sex therapist puts it out there. Uh, I want you two to find two nights over the next week where you can spend at least an hour together. Remember, that time together has to be when you have nothing planned or have to be anywhere. You can just sit and relax and not have to stress on anything. So remember that. Very, very important. Uh, on the first night, you're going to have a date. You're going to arrange for a, you know, a date on the first night of those two nights. The second and the other, well, basically how they do it is you get <laughs> one will arrange the date on the first night and then the other partner arranges the date on the second night. So basically the first partner, if you have to pick numbers out of the hat or do rock, paper, scissors to find out who is going to be uh, the first person to pick the date night completely up to you. You might go the chivalry way and just say ladies before gentlemen or you know if it's same sex who cares whoever wants to do it does it and you each get to pick one of those nights and you you know whoever has the first date night arranges it to you know what they want uh, to do in the bedroom and they're going to set up the bedroom like and you're gonna have clean sheets nice light pleasant music you know set up the ambiance and this overall is to make both of you comfortable and being in a relaxed atmosphere and that's where you want to be when you're doing this. Very, very important. Now, before you go on the date, both of you take a warm shower because it's going to relax you. Water always feels good going on your body and relaxes you. Very, very important. Uh, if you're told, if you tell your partner that you prefer to be wearing underwear for the first exercise well then do it whatever you're telling your partner you prefer to do clothes wise maybe you prefer to keep your underwears on and a t-shirt do it obviously the person the partner setting up the date will help their partner get comfortable on the bed now you spend the approximately half an hour exploring and enjoying the sensation of touching your partner's body. Remember the three stages of sensate focus. And you're getting in, you know, you're getting that comfortable, that relax and all that. Now remember, first stage is avoiding those genitals and breasts. The goal with this exercise, low stress, low, low stress. Now, Obviously, when that half an hour is up with your partner, switch the receiver and the giver positions, and then you do the same. If you, uh, it's funny because with the goal of this home, it's not to give a massage to your partner, it's to touch. There's a difference. Uh, a lot of people find enjoyment in touching which is really, really good. And it's the touching is with no expectations that there's going to be sexual intercourse or any sex. It's just like if you're sitting there and you're playing with your partner, you know, watching a movie and you're playing with your, fin your partner's fingers or hair or something like that. So communicate 
all of this. And this is the whole thing of the date. Do communicate. Tell your partner what feel comfortable, what doesn't feel comfortable. And if they are uncomfortable completely, tell them to just stop. And you have the right to do that. Don't ever think that you do because communication during sex is very important even though I know that a lot of people are afraid of it but this is to help you to put this back you know that communication in there not being afraid to say don't touch me there don't do this don't do that or do that don't do that it's completely up you up to you now it is very very it's, it's sense focusing Focusing um, therapy has found to have a great effectiveness in treating a number of different types of sexual dysfunction, believe it or not, in both sexes, men and women. One, pain during sex, premature, uh, premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, arousal disorders, desire disorders uh, and believe it or not desire disorders is really equated to you know being able to be aroused and everything like that I, I remember most of us in the majority don't separate sex stress from life stress it's kind of sort of in between you can't differentiate in one's piling over into the making both very very hard to uh, even do anything for the most part and be comfortable with it so if your desire is not there this is one of the uh, exercises with sensate focusing sex therapy that actually can help you um, it's really based on couples intervention so remember that you, it's all different ages sizes identities sexual orientations it doesn't matter now do remember that most research and for the most part the majority of research has been done on heterosexuals because that's how it used to be back then um, we have grown a lot sexually as time has gone on, gone on, especially now, a lot, a lot more gender identity and sexual identity has come to the forefront. So, with that uh, being said, unfortunately, we are to the end of the show for today. As always, I do ask that you practice safe sex. If not for yourself, for your partner and vice versa very very important as with any new thing that you try remember educate yourself and most importantly always communicate and extra extra important is consent so with that being said I thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Sex Podcast, which is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I also ask that you please subscribe to the show and leave five stars in a good review. It not only helps me, but does help the GSMC Podcast Network to know what to bring you and what you want to hear. Also, I ask that you Seek us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, because we are there. Hit that little thumbs up button or the little heart. And please put some comments there. Let us know what you'd like to hear on the show. Always good to hear what you know what you want. So, I thank you again for tuning in. And, till next time have awesome sex not even just a night day lunch whatever but do have some great sex while you're
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.